my name is Eddie Topic. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here's your weekly technical analysis of Chicago Soybean Complex. I'll start with the Chicago soybeans themselves. Until today, the recent action was more or less captured within the two explosive days range back in late February between 1579 and 1759. At the start of April, we did see a test and breach of this support band and prices briefly tested down to 1560. This somewhat sideways action since February has turned out to be in the form of a long time in construction bearish pattern. Interestingly, it's also been the form of a more recent idea of a sideways rectangle pattern as well. Now the start of this recent move lower is the very small weekend gap made last weekend between 1621 and 1619. But hold on a minute, there is something else I'd like you to consider. See for weeks now I've been warning that just by going sideways the market will drop below the rising medium moving average and that's currently at 1634. This happened hesitatingly last week. And it was the first time the market has crossed the median moving average since December 2021. Additionally, this was also the first time the market has gone below, as in consciously moved below the median moving average, since June last year. Hence, I had previously suspected we might possibly see a reaction to just that. Well, we had one, if delayed by a few days. I suppose mm, to just make sure. Before I go into details on what to look for on the downside, let me set aside, for now at least, uh, some of the bullish ideas on the upside that seemingly presented themselves. For starters, the bow tie formation of the short moving average currently at 1648, the short medium moving average currently at 1641, and the medium moving average. And this is not going to happen. Then there's the idea in my annual review made at the very start of 2022. This had a possible top side target X in the 20 and a quarter area. For the moment, this as an idea is on hold. Then there are some of the more longer term patterns that I'd seen over the middle and end of last year and going into this year. They are a rounded bottom, a large cup with handle pattern, and ascending scallop pattern. These are all set aside for the moment including the nearest topside target, which is target with a question, target X with a question mark. That's in the 1836 area, though I'll still leave that target listed up there for now. OK, so that organizes that part. What is the potential on the downside for this break lower from the sideways rectangle pattern? Well, a primary target X would be in the 1482 area with a secondary target X1 in the 1399 area. Uh, let's just call it 1400 even to be to be round. Now at the moment the 2014 high at 1522 uh, which was holding it is breached and I didn't think that was going to be such a great support. Below this there is some congestion at 1497 and then we reach target X. However below this we have a congestion area 1451 to 1467 within which sits a dynamic rising and very interesting support. The rising long moving average currently at 1465. This long moving average is the main obstacle to reaching down to target X1 below in the 1400 area. There are two other factors that should be considered. Firstly, breaks below rectangles fare badly, really badly compared to breaks above. Additionally, we also have the now strong possibility we may have a possible monthly key reversal here. If we close next Thursday night, either above 1685 or below 1620, then we'd be on. Right, right now we are looking at a monthly key reversal down by quite a way. Chicago Soybean Mill. Okay, so I have previously, spoke, previously spoken at length about the topping action over late January to late April that turned out to be a head and shoulders top with a split head. It's not a perfect pattern, but it was a workmanlike head and shoulders top eh, as such. In late April, the market breached and closed below the neckline, currently 450.10. 
and triggered the pattern which subsequently fulfilled all the opportunities, primary and secondary, on the downside. Now a significant part of the erosion of the move lower has been, and is what we are still seeing, the market's reluctance to test the slowly rising long moving average, currently 399.70, as well as, well, initially it was the 50% Fibonacci line of the August 21 to March 22 move at 386.80, but more recently it's been the nearer 50% Fibonacci line at 40050 of the October 21 to March 22 move. And the latter has been bridged but not broken during June. The major feature of last week has been the reactionary weekly key reversal up. Yet this has its own issues, notably as been the declining short medium moving average, currently 424.90, that capped the rise on both Friday last week and Monday this week. And it's starting to become a significant bearish force here. Stepping back a bit, we have three issues that need sorting out. The first issue is this. The moves up and down since mid-May have set up an opportunity for the mark for the action since mid-May to be a possible double or triple bottom pattern. Now, I'm the first to say that these patterns are not perfect, far from it, but it doesn't mean they should not be considered. The second issue is instead of looking at the same action as a possible double stroke triple top, or bottom I should say, um, that we look at them starting now from mid April as a possible bearish halfway hesitation. Here again, this one is not perfect, nor is it fully developed, as we need that significant move below the long moving average to even think about triggering the downside leg. But just in case, an interest, a zone of interest, shall we say, for a target below would be in the 360 even area. The third and final issue is one I've described three weeks ago, and I quote, the second and possible longer term pattern, should it come about, may be strategically massive. Disregard the whole action since mid 2021 to date as a huge head and shoulders pattern. This head and shoulders pattern has the original February to April action as a head and shoulders top, as a crown on the large head pattern. Now, before you start jumping to conclusions, yes, head and shoulders patterns, as we have seen them here recently, are usually regarded as topping patterns, but, and it is important, but, but they can also be possible continuation patterns higher. And just because the last head and shoulders pattern seen here was a topping action does not mean that this larger pattern, larger one, will be. Or in other words, post hoc ergo proctor hoc. Now I think it's really important to stress that point. And that's the end of the quote. The neckline, currently 398.10, is also closely associated with the long moving average. And the 50% Fibonacci line at 40050. I'll finish with the words I ended with last week. And I quote, until these markets work their way through these patterns and choose which is which, then we will stay here. End of quote. Chicago Soybean Oil. The market made a new all-time high at the end of April. However, the peak on the last day of April was made with a bearish pattern, a bearish engulfing pattern, if only just. And we subsequently saw prices fall down, even gapping lower down till just after mid-May, when they seemingly stabilized. What caused that stabilization? Well, it was a combination. The 50% Fibonacci line, the February to April move at 75 to 24. Perhaps more importantly, the rising short medium moving average, currently 78.17. Why was this important? Well, if you look back at the last time the market tested the short medium moving average, back at the very start of April, and see how important it was back then in turning the, turning the market back up. Hence, I have repeatedly suggested treating the short medium moving average with great care in any future dealings. And two weeks ago on, on the Thursday, the market made a bearish belt hold pattern, something I pointed out last week, as this is one of the most consistent daily bearish patterns available. And we have dropped lower since. We're below the significant short medium moving average last week and the 50% Fibonacci line at 75.24. Last Friday, prices, prices made a bearish closing long black Marabozo that closed below the combination of the three-pointer mid-January today uptrend, currently at 74.97. 
the rising median moving average currently 74.49 and the previous all-time high back in 2008 at 72.67 these were the last supports before we would be testing the 70 even area which we did yesterday with a bearish opening long black marabosa this tied in with some of my commentary from last week and I quote I have a concern that the late April today action may contain two possible bearish halfway hesitation patterns. They are not good looking patterns, but they are there. The one from mid May gives a possible target below in the 73 even area. This one is doable. I have chosen, but I have chosen as yet not to mark it. The second looking from late April high is down to the 70 even area and ties in with my, with some of my earlier comments. It so all very much depends now if the combination of the uptrend and the rising medium moving average will hold. End of quote. Well, the supports didn't hold, and both those bearish halfway hesitations managed to reach the potential unmarked targets easily this past week. This has all been a major move lower, especially if taken in the context of the weekly key reversal up made three weeks ago and the monthly key reversal up made in April. So, what's next? Well, the next support of note is the slowly rising long moving average, currently at 66.57. And that's almost being tested now. However, I suspect they may not prove to be as supportive as one would assume. I'd like to be proved wrong, but I suspect the mid-February low at 62.81 may be where we look for some support. Beyond that, well, as we have the June 2020 to date uptrend to look at, that's currently at 59.74. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyrights Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Services International Limited. And here comes the final bit.